네, 이렇게 전라북도에서 준비해 주신 탄소 산업 so 소개 영상을 함께 시청하셨습니다. produced by the Jeollabukdo Agency. And now we will begin the new energy and carbon session. So let's invite Professor Ha Song Gyu from Hanyang University. He is a professor at the Mechanical Engineering in Hanyang University, and he's an innovator and a revolutionist in this area, and he's worldly uh, renowned. So he had his PhD at Stanford, and now he's uh, in the Structures and Composites Lab. And for the last 30 years, he has been leading the sector in um, carbon material. So. He is now doing research on low carbon industry, and he's the head of the uh, academia and corporate cooperation. And he is also working on the commercialization of hydrogen pressure tank. Please. Thank you. My, I'm Professor Ha Song Gyu from Hanyang University. So, despite what's going on regarding the pandemic, I, I really thank Jeollabukdo, K Carbon, and Jack Group for organizing this event despite all the uh, difficulties. And actually, a lot more than expected are here. So I think a lot of thoughts have been, I think you need to move inside a little bit because I think the presentation will only be shown towards the right side of the stage. So I've asked the presentation to be shown through two screens. Okay, that's available now. So you can see the presentation from both sides of the room. So this session will mainly talk about the hydrogen pressure tank. As you well know, hydrogen is a key alternative energy to go eco-friendly. So not only in Korea, but globally, it's being renowned. And among hydrogen, the generation and transportation, storage, and development of hydrogen, well, I think the tank storage tank is the most important part because it's also related to safety. So at, J at Jack Korea, we will talk about how we could develop the hydrogen pressure tank with low cost and less materials. So I think this is a very significant event. So from various industries, a lot of renowned and experienced speakers have come here to join us to talk about and discuss the pressure tank for hydrogen storage. So I'm very happy that this event has been organized. So there are seven speakers, five Korean speakers and two international speakers will be presenting today. So the first speaker, as the first speaker, I will talk about the development and commercialization of hydrogen pressure tank. So I will be the lead speaker today. And the other speakers have 20 minutes for each presentation. So it will be nice if you could restrain your uh, presentation time to about 15 minutes so that you could have a little bit of Q&A session at the end. Right, so, so you can sit at the both sides of the table if there is a um, like a plastic divider in the middle of the table, and there are more seats inside the room if you come further inside the room. Well, 
Thank you for coming here to for my presentation. I will be presenting in Korean, and you could get the English translation from the translator device. Please go on to channel two. My slides are prepared in English. So again, I will talk about how we can develop and commercialize the hydrogen pressure tank. So it's a broad topic. So what's important is how to design it, how to manufacture it, and then we will go over the strategic cost analysis. So it's a lot of topic to address in a short time, but we'll, I'll try my best to go over the important points. As you well know, I emphasize again, based on the Paris Agreement, by 2030, the in internal combustion engine ve vehicles cannot operate. So eco-friendly vehicles are being developed globally and launched. In Korea, so um, hydrogen economy, uh, innovation and growth has been the agenda at the national level and it's been applied to the transportation sector, and Korea is developing at a very fast pace. And as you know, the Hyundai Motor Group is working on hydrogen cars. It's actually a global leader, and the strategy is um, to make the ultra gap with the other competitors and is applying the hydrogen technology to cars and transport uh, means. Not only vehicles, the trains and trams are also where the hydrogen technology is being applied. Hyundai Rotem is working on these technologies. And H2COPV, Composite overlap pressure vessels are commercialized for automotive vehicles. As I mentioned earlier, Korea and Japan are leading this trend, and the U.S. is also following very, following very closely. Iljin of Korea and Toyota of Japan are the main developers working on the automotive sector. And going forward, trucks will be a very hot topic, we expect, because trucks require large volumes. So for example, the length needs to be about 2.2 meters. So they will need four or five tanks. So large size storage tanks for trucks have been developed and uh, the companies are working to expand the volume further. So I'm sure you'll be aware of this. The hydrogen tank, you know, there are type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So in case of type 3, the liner is metal and type 5 liner it's linerless, so there are no liners. So most focus is and most commercialized is type 4. In the case of type 4, I've broken them down, broken type 4 down into a few parts. So most of the liners are thermoplastic, but it's a matter of the winding method and the character of the toe. It could be either wet winding or dry toe preg method. Or you can break it down whether, according to whether the resin is thermoset or thermoplastic. So accordingly, we could have type 4 A, B, C, and D. So each company has their res its respective strategies and technologies. So they would choose between type 4 A to type 4 D. So the trend is to go dry and go toe preg, so meaning a lot of the companies are focusing on type 4B. So it, compared to type 4A, the properties and the cost analysis wise, type 4B is evaluated to be a bit more beneficial. Well, cost wise, 
As we move on to mass production, I think the cost benefit will become bigger. In the case of type 4D, it's a bit special because the resin is thermoplastic and is wet winding method. So using thermoplastic resin means that it's recyclable, so the usability is very good. You would know this very well, but the, you know there are many components and technologies entailed in the development of hydrogen tank. The liner and the boss needs to be developed, as you can see at the top side of the presentation, and at the same time, the winding pattern and the winding angle need to be developed. What's important is the boss and the liner shape needs to be in line with the liner pattern and angle. So this is a very important part. And also, as for the fiber, 90% or more is carbon fiber, and then there is resin and tobrek, tobrek, whether it's thermoset or thermoplastic. So the tank design, whatever structure it is, the performance and the cost are very important in commercializing and developing the hydrogen tank. And so we have the design, and then how do we make this into an actual product? So that is related to equipments and machineries. And the last important part is certification. So there are like dozens of um, certifications from the birth set to the cyclic test. And then after all the tests have been passed, then we will go we can go on to mass production. So it's not like a you know step by step approach, but it's multidisciplinary and a simultaneous process. So this is how it is happening at the moment. And the safety of the uh, hydrogen pressure tank is most important, of course. But then next important part is what how it, expensive is this, this is going to be. The cost needs to be addressed at the design level. So in order to commercialize the composite materials, a lot of companies make a mistake. That is, they make the technology first, but then they work on the cost. It means that you have the technology, but there's a big chance that you cannot commercialize it. So the cost needs to be addressed at the time you develop the technology. So then there is the uh, carbon fiber. So the carbon fiber takes up about 40% of the total cost. Those, this is a no, uh, known proportion. So the whether the yearly production is 10K, 20K, or 30K, of course, the cost would differ. So the properties and the material costs, the liner cost, the choice of carbon fiber, and the design of carbon fiber, when you work on all of this, you need to make sure that the, you work on the cost breakdown at the same time. And I've gone over a lot of things so far, but the key is the optimal design for the winding pattern and angle so as to minimize the amount of carbon that you use. That's how you drive the cost down and the safety up. So the liner process is very important, the, what's sh the going to be the liner shape. It could go, it could be blow molding according to the size, it could be injection. And then is the winding process. So when you actually make the, the product, it, new, it needs to be, you need to be sure that the, you have all the equipments so that your actual product is pretty much the same as a design. Of course, you know, we rely on the equipment. The process time is very important. And then the last part, the last stage is certification. So of course, the most important would be the birth test. So you need to get the score of at least 2.25. 
And as you know, cyclic tests is the most important in the certification stage. So it needs to endure various weights. If 700 bar is 100%, 125 or less needs to be endured at minus, minus 30 um, degrees Celsius, so on. So there are many criteria. So you need to, at the design stage, you also need to work on how you're going to um, pro progress in the certification stage. You know, there are many points that we need to go over, but as mentioned, the liner shape needs to be geometrically um, modeled, and then it needs to be translated into parameters. So that is a very important process. So I'm going to come back to this um, slide a little bit later. So when you design the liner, the boss shape and the boss size are very important because they have a lot of effect. So what's going to be the shape of the boss? And when you make the liner, and when you, so what's the properties according to the blow molding? You know, you would be running a lot of simul, simul, um, simulta simulations. And then you need to work on the winding pattern. So regarding the liner dome shape optimization, companies will have different patterns to approach this. But based on my experience, my proposal is to use RNZ radial and axial. So A will be the radius and B will be the X, axis. So we will be adopting the uh, factor of A and M. So according to the M variable, we'll be able to change the shape of the dome. If there are too many variables, then it will be difficult to actually produce. So what's important is how you will optimize the B and the M during the design stage. So that will be my proposal to work on B and M at the design stage. And then boss shape, especially the size of the flange. According to the size of the flange, the the, the thickness of the uh, carbon fiber inside the dome is affected by the size of the flange and, of course, the safety. So the flange of the boss, whether it's big or small, will have an impact on the stress that is applied to the composite material. So the liner shape and the layup order, all of these come in combination. So I strongly recommend using the optimization method. So the layup sequence using the uh, B and M and A in the fraction. So to satisfy the volume by minimizing the cost. And of course, we could do the paramedic study, but if you want to work on optimization, I think you could also use the already available commercialization tools. And then let's go on the next slide. So what's the difference between wet winding and toe prep? A lot of companies you know, ask questions, what's the difference? So is there any, you know, pros and cons regarding the properties? Yes, of course. Especially dry winding, the fraction coefficient can be adjusted. So this is one of the big advantage. So this is not like a, you know, exact data, but this is uh, like a sample comparing the 52 liter wet, 250 liter wet, and 250 liter dry methods. So if you look at the H2 storage ratio, it's 6.1% at 52 liter wet. Getting a 6% storage ratio is actually very difficult. So you can see that as the storage grows, the um, storage ratio also goes up a little bit. 
And as I mentioned, the, we do the line of geometric modeling and then we go on to optimization. And then by the academia and by the uh, companies, you know, it's too difficult and complicated to do this by hand. So it's very important so that you choose the right tools. Of course, there's a you know, variety of tools that you can use, but the tools that we actually use for research and commercialization. So the most important part of the tools is when you choose the tools is the micromechanics um, side because the fiber volume fraction differs according to like the strength and the tension and the strains. So usually you know you get the properties first and then you change the tension and to work on the comparisons but this is a more difficult way. So according to the fiber fiber volume fraction the properties would change and at the preprocessor solver and postprocessor process there's a tool that we use as you can see on this page. And using these tools, the UD stiffness and the UD strength and fatigue would be, could be analyzed. So it's not like 100% uh, verified process, but it's been um, empirically approved. So on the left side, there. So the B is 40%, 60%, 80% of A, and you could see a little bit of difference accordingly. So when the M value changes, a little changes happen on the actual shape, and it actually has a lot of impact on the strain. And in the case of automotive OEM, the total length is part of the design requirement. So when the B gets smaller, the dome gets smaller, so the and the volume actually gets optimized, maximized. But you also need to consider the strain factor in the stage. So you could work on a lot of you can um, work on a lot of um, analysis regarding what the right B is. And then the pattern and the angles can vary, as you can see on this page. So according to the location, I don't have a pointer, but so how each, how the layup needs to happen vertically is very important. So. This is the layup sequence. So at each point, how you need to lay up is very important. And at, this is the method that we use at our center. So developing the measuring real, so we actually create a digital camera during the winding process to monitor the shape of, uh, we digitize it and we compare it with the actual design. So it's an image correlation technique. And so, so far, so we also target the burst test when we do the design. So at the certification process, cycle test is most important. So how do we combine the design factor with this cyclic test? So there is no standard in the world yet, but empirically speaking, what I can say is that even if, it's a, if, it, even if the winding angle is the same, there could be many patterns. So whether the number of tangents is 3, 5, 6, or 13, you know, whether if the you know whether the pattern is zigzag or you know cross transversal it will affect the result of the cyclic test so you need to think about these parts when you um, prepare for the certification so mirai toyota toyota has been um, using this mirai technology for a long time now so based on the known information I have applied what I have said to this page as much as possible. 
So this is, uh, there's a, a typo here. It's, what is known so far is that the, the weight ratio of the tank storage is 5.7, which is quite high, actually. The tank storage density is 5.7. And among, there are many techniques in the design side. But so Toyota optimized the boss. As I mentioned, the flange size and the, the, the mouth size had been optimized. So the, their conclusion is that boss flange needs to be a bit big, but the entrance part needs to be a little small. And then the composite material can endure the biggest strength and reduce the failure at the dome. So this page illustrates the design of Toyota Mirai. So the M is 2.4. In this page, and the proposed technique is proven effective. And on the left side is a general stress test pattern. So the y axis is fiber strain. You can see how it changes according to the distance. So, and the result is that the carbon fiber had been saved by 15% maximum. It's quite significant. I haven't prepared that slide yet, but another key technique is hook winding. So you push the hook winding to the inside as much as possible, and then the problem at the junction can be overcome. So this was another uh, technique that you need to develop. And at the Hanyang, this is the, this is where I work, Hanyang Composite Center. So we have a lab of 750 square meters with five meter ceiling. So we work on the, do the tests, fatigue test, and we have the winding machines to actually produce the product. And this is a process map. So during the process, well, we recommend our processes to the relevant companies, and that is to install the cameras at each process. So it's like a Zoom meeting. So the central operator will be able to monitor what's happening at each process at the same time. And for each part, you know, you can record it for two hours or three hours, and then it will be difficult. I mean, it will be easier for you to find out where uh, default has broken out. So at our lab, we have nine cameras monitoring the processes. So we use the UV curing system. And with what has been produced, we do the burst test. And again, we have the camera at each station, so we can do the online monitoring. And all the processes are recorded and stored. And so we have conducted a burst test with 1,544 bars recently. You don't really need to go up to 1,600 bars. So I think the key is to, uh, to control the pressure to as near as 1,570 bars. So I'm going to, so th there could be boss ejection failures. So you need to be careful at this stage. And we did experiments, and we we were able to do a simulation of the the boss actually you know, shooting out like a bullet. So we have here case one, two, and three: carbon epoxy, carbon thermoplastic, and hybrid. In this page, so epoxy, thermoplastic, and hybrid fiber had been compared in terms of the cost and the strength and mass analysis. And at the left side, after the actual winding and after actual confirmed number of the VF was 60, 
percent for case one. And so in terms of the material cost, so about $700 for case one and two, and about 590 for case three. But of course, the 10% mass increase is observed in case three, but the cost is significantly lower. So I'm under time restraint, so I'll go a little bit faster. So low cost would be the biggest competitive factor for the companies. So innovative liner and winding design will be very important to achieve low cost. So and type four and manufacturing process need to be incorporated into the design process. And we want to share our knowledge with a lot of companies. And that's why I personally created this lab at Hanyang University to share the d design methods and experiences. That will be the end. Thank you. So because of the time restraint, I can only receive one question. So if you have a question, then you know, even after the conference, please contact me. And if you don't have any questions, then I would like to uh, give the mic to the second speaker. The second speaker will be, as you can see his picture here already, he is from Iljin High Solus. And despite his busy schedules, he made it today to give his presentation. His name is Jong Yeol Kim, and he is the senior research engineer of Iljin High Solus. And the subject of his presentation will be high pressure container made of carbon composite materials for hydrogen vehicles. Let us have him on the podium and give him a big round of applause.